folks, so tonight I'm going to talk about how to build an Orange Pi Zero and I'm going to walk you through it step by step from the point where you got it out of the box to the point where you're logging into it and you've got Wi-Fi activated. So I'm going to start a second camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so let's talk about what you need. You need a power supply, USB with a micro USB connector. Um, I bought this on eBay, this particular cable on eBay for 99 cents. It does the trick. It's plugged into a one amp power supply. You know, maybe that's not enough, but this doesn't draw anything and I've been running one for a couple weeks with no issues. Now, you need an Orange Pi Zero. You can use 256 meg or you can use the 512 meg edition. This one's the 512 meg edition, so it has lots of memory. Um, I'm excited to play with it. If you want to access it on a monitor, you're going to need a v video to VGA adapter. This one's $18.99 on Amazon. I talk about it in another video, so if you want to see how that works, hit that video up. Um, you do need some hardware if you're going to run that. You need um, a way to convert from video to jumpers, and then you need to plug the jumpers in. You also need a memory card. 4 gig is just fine. Uh, Debian Jesse from Armbian uses 1.2 gigs of space on here. And um, when you're done configuring it, it will look like this. This one's running Octoprint. Um, I'll do a second video that shows how to get Octoprint running. So you also are going to need a computer and it helps to have a list of the steps. I'll post this on my, on my blog, nanohawk.com. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, I need to put the memory card in. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a pretty nice connector, so it just pops in there. And then I need to power it up, but before I power it up, I'm going to hook up the video because I actually do want to bring it up on this. So, red is ring, gray is tip on this. So the ring is the ground, and the ground is the second pin, and then the gray is the tip, and it is the fifth pin from the opposite end. So one, two, three, four, five. That should be my video, and I just happen to know that's five volts and that's ground. Again, my blog Nanohawk has a pinout that I got from uh, somebody else and uh, I've shared. So let's go ahead and power this up. Now, when you first power it up, it's not gonna put a video signal out. Oh, and that reminds me, you need a keyboard. Now, if you don't wanna use a keyboard like this, you can use a little tiny keyboard like this. Um, I don't find this to be terribly comfy to type on. It was about $10 on Amazon. Um, it's okay. Um, I got one of these gearhead keyboards and it was bad and I had to exchange it. Amazon was great about it. So let's go ahead and plug in this USB. We've only got one USB port here. The other thing you need is a network connection because out of the box, this thing, the Wi-Fi is not gonna be working. So let me just steal the network connection from that one and plug it in. All right, so next thing's next, we're gonna power it up. And it takes a little bit of time for it to go through its boot up process. First time it boots up, it's gonna establish the file system. That looks like it's sticking out. So. Hopefully it will fire up here. It does take a few seconds the first time you plug it in. Yep, I've got power there. I'm gonna re restart it here because it I may have made it unhappy. So I'm looking for an LED to light up here and this, this could take 30 seconds or so. There it goes. So we're on the way to booting up. Um, it will go from green to red and then it will reboot and it'll go, to, it'll go to green again and that's the point where I should start looking for it on the network. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my uh, screen capture here so you guys can watch my screen and see what I'm actually doing. So I think this is on the network now. I'm gonna set my keyboard off to the side for a minute. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for it. I'm using Angry IP Scanner. This is an old piece of software. 
and um, I have configured it to look for port 22. I'm looking for SSH and I'm looking in my DHCP range in my network. So we're gonna let this run. Um, these tips do tend to run a little bit on the hot side, so while we're waiting, I'm going to put a heat sink on it. You know, there's a couple different schools of thought on these. One school says you don't really need them. I say they don't hurt and they don't cost much. I bought a bag of 30 of these things for like 80 cents on AliExpress. So, we're going to go ahead and put one on here and just see what happens it won't hurt anything. Well, one of the things I can do is I can try a different power supply. So let me try that real fast. So we're going to see if this is ready to go. I've got the settings on this uh, for scanning for port 22. So I'm just waiting for the scan to finish. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for live hosts that have port 22 open. Got one. It's very likely what I'm looking for. So I'll go into utilities, delete closed heart ports. So 55, yep, that's it. 192, 168.1.55. Move that out of my way. We'll accept its token and it is root one two three four so there we are we're flashing green and red which means it may not be ready for me we'll see not seen it do that before actually Okay, so I think we're ready to go here. I'm going to try and reconnect, see if it didn't shift on me. Uh, duplicate session. There we go. So root and 1234 is the default username and password. Now it, yep, that's it. And so now it's going to make me change the password. Oops, and I typed in the wrong one. Yeah, so it hung up on me. Try again. So root one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. New password. New password. And we'll create a new account called admin. Secret. Secret. Screw off. All right. Now I'm lazy, so I'm just pseudoing S, so I don't have to mess with permissions. Now I'm going to bring up my cheat sheet here, and the first thing we got to do is turn on TV. I thought I had this in here. Guess not. All right, so let's go. Let me go look it up real fast. All right, so you need to go into 
etc. Nano modules and just simply add TV to the last line. Go ahead and save it. And exit. And reboot. Okay, so we'll give that a minute to come back up. When it does come back up, it's going to display on here. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to check this. I might have this backwards. So if you do, it's not a big deal. You just reverse these. There we go. So I, I had those backwards. In this particular case, the gray was the ground and red was the tip. Oops. So I'm going to log in. All right. So first things first, sudo s. I want to just update it and run upgrades. You know, if you want to see how it's running. We can run RBM monitor. And this will give us the core speed and the temperature of the system. So we can see it's working a little bit, but it's you know it's not gonna blow up. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so my initial update finished. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install a couple packages that I like to work with. The first one is called Locale Purge, and it just removes unnecessary stuff. I think on these small systems, it's really critical to run something like this. And then I'm going to select the variations of English that I like to have on my systems. And what this will do is remove all the documentations and languages I can't read. I highly recommend it. All right, so um, next let's go ahead and install or take care of the Wi-Fi. There's a tool called NMTUI, run it. And we wanna activate a connection, in this case that one. I will put in my keys, hit quit. It's just that easy. So, so Ethernet zero is here and then WLAN zero, I've got my address. So that's it. That brings the system on the network. I've got local display, I'm on Wi-Fi. I, I can, you know, and I'll connect to it with this system here. New session 182.168.1.56. It's a little pokey, but it should come up. There it goes. Yep. And so I've logged into that system from this laptop via Wi Fi. And this laptop's on Wi Fi as well. So, um, you know, and we can see here on the local terminal, you know, it's being a good soldier and it's throttling the CPU when there's nothing to do. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. I'm sorry if it's a little bit long and slow, but that shows you how to configure an Orange Pi Zero and go from 
you know, out of the box to networked. Um, I'm going to do another one and show how to install Postfix on it because I like to have mail come from my systems. So stay tuned for that video.